Alex Smith kind enough to join us this morning. Now, you know, Alex, you have seen her on television a bunch of times. Alexandra Smith, the executive director of America Rising. Alex, nice of you to be with us on this uh, Wednesday. How are things out in D.C. these days? <laughs> uh, the, the swamp is, uh, is alive and well, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I think that Republicans are, are attempting to push back against uh, democratic uh, lunacy this in the term election. Well, it's pretty bizarre. That is for darn sure. I don't recall seeing a uh, a political season nearly as crazy as this one, but perhaps there is hope. Sunday night's premiere of the Alec Baldwin show got a .4 rating. He had Bobby De Niro as his guest. Still the lowest rated program in the demo of any broadcast, so perhaps people are starting to understand what may be going on, huh? Well, I, you know, I think that the the big uh, the big um, you know sort of fork in the road here was was the Kavanaugh hearings. Yeah. Um, I think that that's where Republicans who may have been um, sort of uh, you know uh, complacent after the 2016 election, thinking, all right, well, I got out to vote, voted for the president, the economy's doing well, I don't need to come out and vote for these midterm elections. Uh, the Democrats reminded. Uh, a lot of Republicans about what's at stake uh, when Democrats were trying to take away a fundamental, you know, sort of right in, in terms of uh, being innocent until proven guilty, um, when they wanted to reverse that, um, when they're calling for um, Republicans to be confronted in restaurants and uh, at gas stations um, and to, to be physically threatened um, for their beliefs. I think that you know, Republicans and even independents who will be crucial in these midterm elections are watching all of this unfold and say, wait a second, you know, there, there's there's something at stake for me in these midterm elections and I, I got to get, get out there. Well, there is no doubt. Have you been speaking at all with any other, I guess, folks that may be on the fence at all? I've had an opportunity. I, I bring this up uh, whenever I have a chance to talk with friends if I'm out at a tavern or out for dinner or what have you. I'm talking with a lot of people about this, and they say that they have never voted a straight party line ticket before. They usually, you know, decide, I'm kind of an independent thinker. I'm going to go for this candidate. I'm going to go for that candidate, even though it's across the fence. I like this guy. I like that gal. Now they are saying more and more people that I'm talking to are, are, are saying they're just going to go straight Republican right down the line. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely hearing that. And you're hearing that in places uh, that are unusual. Um, take New Jersey, for example. This is a place where um, the Democrats just dumped in $3 million. That's $3 million that they could have spent defending one of their more vulnerable incumbents in Missouri or Florida, for example. Um, but they, the Calvary is coming to the rescue of Senator Bob Menendez out here, who is, you know, who was one of just 12 uh, sitting senators to be indicted in the history of the U.S. Senate um, for ethics violations. Um, you know, stemming from his, his dealings with a guy named Dr. Melgan and um, sort of an exchange of, of official services um, for campaign contributions. Um, you know, there are a lot of people in New Jersey, a lot of independent sort of voters, maybe voters who um, had voted for Governor Phil Murphy in the 2017 elections, uh, who was a Democrat, saying this is just a bridge too far with the Menendez um, stuff. So, uh, there's definitely been some movement there. And I think that it, in other places in the country where the races are more competitive, again, I really think that the, the Kavanaugh hearing was a, was a wake-up call. Um, and senators like Claire McCaskill and Bill Nelson, they have a lot of explaining to do for their constituents about why why didn't they voted against the president's nominee. Well, I have to ask you about Elizabeth Warren, because, wow, here's a gal that uh, perhaps shot herself in both feet, huh? Absolutely. Um, this is a major unforced error. Uh, she comes out 22 days at the time before the midterm elections, uh, injecting this story into the news cycle, a news cycle that's always hungry for controversy. And this just plays right into... Um, something that the media would love to cover, which is the fact that, you know, have Donald Trump out there on the campaign trail um, at these big rallies, constantly poking fun at her. Um, she responds with this, like, slick ad and, the, you know, this, this bombshell claim that she could potentially be 
uh, a fractional uh, amount of Native, Amer- of Native American based on some DNA tests that she had performed. Um, and, I, you know, I mean, she has drawn the ridicule of um, Republicans for this. She has drawn the ire of a lot of liberals for this. And she, you know, she managed to anger some prominent Native American groups um, in doing this. Uh, and I think that the, the key here is that it is not that Elizabeth Warren um, was she, she answered the wrong question. Um, she was trying to say, look, I, I am, in fact, this small percentage of, of Native American. Um, the question was, though, first of all, did she use this infinitesimally small amount of Native American to advance herself professionally? And the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> and, uh, that's just a major um, violation of, of sort of liberal thinking. Um, that these, uh, you know, spots in higher education and other places should go to disadvantaged minorities and not uh, more privileged people like America, or like like uh, Elizabeth Warren. All right, quick question for you: When it comes to younger voters, right? How how important is this going to be? The Elizabeth Warren thing, all of the other silly things that uh, Democrats seem to be doing, shooting themselves in the foot, no matter which way you look. How important is that going to be to younger voters? And how are you going to get that story to them? You know, I think that this is definitely something that could set her apart in a pretty negative way with younger progressive voters. Um, because, again, the, the language of modern liberalism is that uh, disadvantaged minorities are due um, an advancement in society over more privileged white people. And there's no, there, you know, you could find no greater example of a privileged white woman <laughs> than Elizabeth Warren. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think that, uh, you know, she runs the risk of turning herself into another Hillary Clinton, someone who, who claimed to be the, this great um, barrier breaker, but she was just out of touch, as you could see with the, the primary challenge from Bernie Sanders, where he was able to galvanize those young voters um, against Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren, I think, is going to face a very similar problem. All right, just one last question for you, and that is regarding Melania Trump, uh, her spokesperson asking for a boycott of some guy's music that I don't even care about. Uh, but her communications director is Stephanie Grisham. She, she tweets out her disapproval over the weekend after the release of a promotional album video that features a Melania Trump look-alike in this video wearing the infamous... I really don't care, do you, jacket. Now, that whole thing was totally misconstrued by the media. I really don't care, do you, the jacket. But I don't recall ever, ever before such a sleazy approach to a first lady in my life. The poor woman can't do anything right. It's awful. I mean, could you imagine if, uh, you know, if if this if the reverse is true and, and something, you know, a disparaging video was made about Michelle Obama, uh, you know, there would be outrage from, from the media. But, you know, because uh, she's Melania Trump, you know, the, the people get a pass. Uh, look, I think that you know, people are going to look at this kind of stuff. And it's not, you know, I mean, they're going to look at this kind of bullying from, from the left. Uh, it's not just with the First Lady. You have people like Maxine Waters who are talking about physically confronting um, supporters of the president, where they are in restaurants and gas stations. <laughs> um, you, you know, this is how they're thinking these days. And I think that that's going to be a huge turnoff to independent voters in this midterm election. Well, and you don't have to even talk about Michelle Obama. What about any of the other former uh, Republican first ladies that were in office? I mean, it, it just it's beyond the pale. It's classless. It's awful. Uh, listen, Alex, I, I'm up against the clock here. I have to say thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, where will we see you next? Will you be on Fox TV, Fox News? Where are you going? Fox Business? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, tonight I'll be on uh, Shannon Bream's show late at night. Very nice. At 11 o'clock. <laughs> well, Alex, I appreciate you spending time with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.